Collar A can slide on a frictionless vertical rod and is attached to, as shown, to a spring. The spring is unstretched when H is 12. The system is in equilibrium when H is 16. This is H over here. Find the weight of the collar at A. We're looking for W. First step, as it always, is to draw your nice free body diagram. What are you going to draw the free body diagram of? In this case, what we're looking for is the weight of the collar. So it makes good sense to draw your free body diagram of this collar at A. What forces are acting on the collar? Well, it's a frictionless vertical rod, which means there's no force vertically from the rod, but there's certainly going to be a normal force in the uh, uh, perpendicular to the rod that keeps A from just the collar at A from skittering it off to the right. The other thing you'll have is the force from the cord, the tension in the cord, and the weight of the collar. The weight will be vertical, the normal force will be perpendicular to the rod, and we need to have the angle for this tension from the rope, which is given as a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Now once you've done that, you can write your equilibrium equations. I only have three forces, and this is a nice particle. So I'm going to have two equations of motion, the sum of the forces in x and the sum of the forces in y. Some of the forces in y is the one we're going to need. Some of the forces in x just says that n plus 3 fifths of t is equal to 0, but I don't really need to know what n is. Even if I knew what t was, this would only give me n. n is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for w. This says 4 fifths of t minus w equals 0. This is the one we're going to want to use. But we do need to figure out what t is. If I knew what t was, then I could substitute into here, and I would be able to solve for w. What do you know about this situation? You know that there were two different times. You know that when h is 12, you have this nice triangle for the length of this rope. And then after the spring stretches, you still have 12 here, but now you have a depth h of 16. So those are my two cases. This is unstretched and this is stretched. Well, the tension in the wire is going to be the spring constant times s, where s is the change in length of the spring. We're going to assume that the rope is not going to stretch. Spring. The rope is not going to stretch, so any change in length is coming from the spring as this stretched rope slash spring becomes longer, that increases the tension in your spring. This hypotenuse here by the Pythagorean theorem has length 12 and the square root of 2. The hypotenuse in the second case where this ro rope, the rope has not s stretched but the spring has, will be the square root of 12 squared plus 16 squared, which is 20. So the change in the length of the spring is 20 minus 12 on the square root of 2. And k was given, your spring constant is 4 pounds per inch. That's it from the problem. So the tension in your rope is 4 times 20 minus 12 on the square root of 2, which is 12.1177 pounds. That tension you can plug into your equilibrium equations and solve. W is 9.69 pounds. So the couple things you need to realize here, the tension on either side of your pulley is the same. So the tension in the rope from A to B is the same as the tension in the spring. And the tension in the spring is given by Ks, where K is the spring constant and S is the change in length of the spring. You need to know how to draw a free body diagram and write equilibrium equations and then solve them to get the right answer.